Our guest on the program is Jim Ouellette. He knows all things water here in the eastern Panhill. Jim, belly up close to your mic and uh, say good morning to everybody. Good morning. All right, so it's been a dry summer. There's a lot of crunchy lawns out there and fields. Are we in trouble water-wise in the eastern Panhandle? It's not good. The uh, The drought really started you know, last winter. It's, uh, we didn't have much snow. It was low precipitation. Uh, we kind of sensed it was developing. And um, it's gotten only worse. And mm -hmm. this is kind of a remarkable stretch of weather we've had with lack of rain and excessive heat. And the unfortunate aspect of, of uh, our water supply is that we depend on a spring, which is a groundwater source. You, now you're talking about from the, the uh, Berkeley County water. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Berkeley yeah. County water. And down in the south end of the county, the source of water that's been in place since the, uh, the utility was commenced back in the 50s uh, was Lefevre Spring, and it is subjected to um, precipitation. It's, uh, it's recharged. But when you get long periods where you have no precipitation, then this is the situation that develops, and its yield is diminishing quickly, and it's down uh, to about uh, 1,200 gallons a minute right now. Yeah, it's been reported that back in the 60s we had quite a drought uh, where it actually declined to 800 gallons a minute, and that's been the historical low point of it. Well, excuse me. Uh, in 2000 and 2002, I think, we were within one day of running out of water in the southern part of the county. Yeah, there was a, that was the last cycle in which we had a, a yeah. real dry yeah. period, and that uh, was a very serious matter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, fortunately, uh, we got through it uh, at the time. Um, our, our plan is that we are going to try to utilize more water from the city of Martinsburg which we have an uh, arrangement with them to take up to a million gallons a day. But it's not able, without additional pumping, to move it into the south end of the county, where is the area that we're most uh, distressed as we speak. So we fortunately, we started making plans back in July for this, and we have the uh, pipes in place. Now we've just got some pumps done on the way tomorrow, and we're going to try to move water from the industrial zone, is what we refer to it as, further south into the, into the inward area to try to get by. But we are in a very delicate situation, and we are asking everyone from all over the county, please discontinue any outdoor water use. Discontinue. Don't cut Dis back. Discontinue. Discontinue. It's, it's not good. It's, um, it, can only, it could get worse if we have extended periods before we get measurable precipitation. And we don't want to find ourselves in a more of a desperate situation. Are you still pumping from the Potomac River to the southern part of the county? Yes, we are, Admiral. We've uh, we've actually fortunate that part of the big picture is the river is the one source of supply that is drought resistant in our community. And I've been expressing this for the last five years. That that is our future because it is a sustainable source of water, whereas groundwater is more susceptible to climatic change. So we're trying to optimize the value of the river. The problem being that the river, where we get the water from, is way up north, and our customers are all throughout the system heading south. So you have to be able to get the water, treat it, and then convey it to where it needs to be. And there is our challenge, and this is why, as we speak, we have a project underway with 20,000 feet of water main is being installed along uh, Kelly Island Road and, and from uh, Route 11 and Payne's Ford Road, all with the objective that we're trying to convey water from the river plant further into the system. Now, nothing happens quickly, and this isn't going to do us any good today. It's part of a bigger picture. And we also need more water storage tanks so that when we do expand the capacity of the river plant, and we have the capacity to move that water and treat that water. We want a place to store it where we then can leapfrog it further south. So all these things are underway, but as we speak today, it has no value. And one of the more discouraging things we've run into lately is as in 2020, in the fall of 2020, we commenced the design of the expansion of the river plant as well as the replacement of the Bunker Hill plant. And here we are three years later. And because of all the red tape you have to go through, and all the regulations, and all the delays, and all the financing, when you, when you start financing with the government, they have wonderful, attractive rates that are going to be good for our customers. But the, the, 
obstacles you have to go through in order to get that to the point where we can go out to bid has been extremely frustrating and it's only delaying our objective to have that additional capacity and ability to provide service to our customers. Now that wouldn't help us today because it wouldn't be ready for today. But it's just a general concept that whenever you start a project, you need to depend on many, many years before it actually comes to fruition. It's not like you're going to the store and buying a box of Cheerios and you're done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, but let me put a pause to spend. Uh, you're, you're exactly right, Jim, in the reality that we're facing a water crutch, and we'll continue that in a second. But uh, you and your predecessors have come a long way in the last 20 years. For one thing, you do have a distribution system from north to south. You want to expand it, you want to enlarge it, but there is a distribution system in place. Also, you have permission uh, uh, to take more water from the Potomac. At uh, one time, it was limited, I think, to 2 million gallons a day. Now you're up to, what, 8 to 10 million gallons a day. Uh, but there, there's, there's progress being made, but we still need a long ways to go. Yeah, the good news, Admiral, is that there is no limitation as to what the district can take from the Potomac yeah. River. It's in endless. Unless, and, unless the Chesapeake Bay starts getting, uh, seeing, seeing the effect, that is a driver. If the Chesapeake Bay starts seeing things, everything, the D.C., the District of Columbia, all these municipalities got to cut back. Yeah, it's supposed to be yeah. a volunteer, but it's yeah. not a, a, a specific number. So that's the good point, as I mentioned earlier. That's the source of supply that we can depend on for the future of this community. And without that, this community could not be what it is with respect to all the people that are moving here as well as all the industries that desire to locate here. Uh, so we, we got plans underway to expand the river plant to 10 million gallons a day. It's ready to go out to bid once we get the financing squared away. We got water mains that you just mentioned, Admiral. In the last three, four years, we've spent a lot of money to convey water from basically the uh, Duke Street tank area all the way down to Route 9 where the jail is. And this next tranche of water mains that we're installing is all to, to continue that ability to move water further south. And we want to build another tank in addition to the Grubbs Corner tank that we built a few years ago, all to get water down to where everybody's demanding it. And it just never ends that people keep coming to the community saying, hey, can we locate here? Yeah, so that's an excellent point. What some of our um, listeners are commenting on is clearly the capacity that we have. Um, combine that with or put that alongside the people who are moving here and the businesses and industries that are coming in. I've heard you talk about the amount of water that P&G uses in a day. And then, of course, just average Joe who's out there apparently watering his lawn in Damon Wright's neighborhood still um, but you know there's there's some question about the capacity and what do you do about that that's a very fair question we have plans to as I just alluded to to expand the capacity of the one source of supply that we know is drought resistant but it's going to take time what do we do in the meantime? Because look at what we find ourselves in now. Uh, just to give you an idea, our fiscal year ends in June 30th. We just added 1,120 new homes in our last fiscal year. Mm -hmm. Now do the math on that, it's like 2.8 every single day of the year. That's how many people have moved into our community. New houses, new metered connections. Think about it that way, that's a lot. And that adds up to another 100,000 gallons a day, another 100,000 gallons a day, another 100,000 gallons a day of what we have to come up with. And then, of course, we continue to get some businesses that we, we embrace. They want to come to our community and help us be you know, prosperous and benefit everybody who's here. But they demand a lot of water. We have the plans. We're just not there. Now, what do we do in the meantime is a good question. And at, at what point do we continue to put people on the plane knowing that the plane has a certain capacity and if something goes wrong, everybody gets affected. So it's a question that we need to discuss uh, in the community itself as to how do we move forward from here until we can make sure that we have a substantial foundation on which the water supply can be depended upon in all conditions to provide the service it's demanded. Because remember, we are in the public health and safety business. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't realize that. Think what we'd life is like if you don't have water and all the sanitary values it brings. And so my world, in my heart, it's always, 
I, I think we have, our most important thing is to focus on our existing customers. Jim Ouellette is our guest. He's the executive director of the Berkeley County Public Service Water District. Jim, is there anybody right now in Berkeley County who, when they turn on the tap, is not able to get a clean supply of water from a well that you've, you're aware of? No, we're fine at the moment. We're getting by, but it's just because that spring tends to de- decline until it's re- recharged, we're not heading in the right direction. Yeah, but let me, I need. I think we need to clarify right now. Jim is talking about those folks on the public service orders district. That's approximately 50% of the county, if I, if I remember. It may have been a little bit different now. But still, a large section of the county, a large proportion, are not on public water. They're on wells. Mm-hmm. And these are the, uh, and frequently septic as well. This is what scares me a great deal. Because you've been through this before. I've been through this, sure. yeah. We have not yet seen uh, seen a litany of wells drying up, but as dry as it is, we're going to see them drying up. Uh, there was an ordinance put in place uh, 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 a few years ago uh, that says before a new development, and we're, again, I'm talking outside of the Public Service Water District, for every development of more than 1,500, uh, 50, excuse me, excuse me, sorry, uh, anything more than 15 new houses in a development, the developer had to do a water budget to ensure that during dry times there'd be enough water for not only for the new houses coming in, but for those existing houses as well. What could be worse than being on a well for 25 or 30 or 40 years and a development comes in and sick, uh, takes up all your water and you no longer have water? I feel sorry for those folks with the new homes coming in. I feel even more sorry for those folks that have been there for 25, 30, 50 years and they lose the water. We have not seen the problem yet, but walking through the woods over this weekend, it's dry, dry, dry. So I bet we start seeing some private wells started drying up. Now, this is not in the purview of Jim and his group, but it's, and, but these folks that's losing the well don't have a lot of recourse. Actually, Admiral, we are seeing that already. People, oh, okay. people come to us when okay. their well goes dry mm-hmm. if we happen to be in proximity to their house. Yeah. Yeah. So we've already got a yeah. number of requests. Okay. Well, good for you because they, they don't really have any other recourse right now. Yeah. yeah. And it's, like I say, unless we get some yeah. precipitation that's yeah. measurable, not yeah. just superficial, uh, it's not getting better before it gets worse. How many inches of rain do you speculate it would take to replenish some of these? Uh, Rob, it's impossible to say that off the top of my head. It's just, it's it's going to take a lot. And it takes a while for it to not only just it falls one day. It doesn't solve the problem the next. It has to get into the ground. Very good. Maria? So... Um, Actually, again, going back to the folks who are listening along with us, um, it is a Hobson's choice, though. I mean, at what point do you say, no more, we're going to cut off the development of either businesses or homes or what have you? Um, And Sandy Hamilton makes a good point. What about all the people who work there? I mean, if you say to P&G or to um, someone, well, we need to... We need to um, make some um, some changes in in what you're doing. the The impact goes on and on. Correct. Yeah, that's why we you know we have these plans, but we need to get them in, get them going. And um, but we may have to come to the realization and until we have that substantial capacity okay. we need to suspend you, you just can't keep adding to something that can't be sustained mm-hmm. the plans are in place to address it but it's going to take time it's taking time now what do you sure. do in the interim and that's the question that i think uh, the water district needs to consider and address and uh, because every year we could find ourselves in the same situation. If we had a lot of rain, then this problem isn't being discussed. Right, today. we're not even talking about it. But that doesn't mean it goes away because in the water business, as I alluded to earlier, we're in the public health and safety business and you do not operate on a close margin. You always want to have surplus capacity so in the event something does go wrong, the consequences are not substantial. And at this point, we need to consider where are we with regards to that understanding what are the water levels like for the river well the river is very low but that's okay the river will always have water in it as long as there's water in the 
what's it, the Jennings Reservoir, Gen- the Admiral? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And they actually release water based upon the levels that are, are, are observed somewhere downstream. So that's why we're comfortable, as long as the dam doesn't go anywhere, there's always going to be a supply of water for the community, as long as we can get it, treat it, and, and distribute it. Uh, so we're happy with that. That's a good thing. Like I said, that's the only reason this community will be a, what it is because of that river. Uh-huh. It's, it's slow, but it's okay right now. That's not a concern of ours, as Brad, we speak. Brad Knowles indicating in his post that this is, appears to be a regional drought, and when you travel West Virginia, it doesn't seem to be the situation when you get on the other side of the uh, the mountains. Uh, but in this area, it, it clearly is. Isn't it amazing how you yeah. see these storms come across, and all and then of a they sudden just stop. they yeah. hit the mountain, and we get nothing. And yet they get five inches of rain somewhere else. And the, one of the other variables that's occurring is it's Winchester's being affected too. Uh, they're in a situ- very they've already put out you know restrictions, and they're in they're in a, they're having challenges down there. And it just seems to be this little corridor along this area where we're not getting what other people are receiving. Is uh, at some point mandatory restriction a a possibility which would maybe include fines if you violate the restrictions yeah there are specific public service commission criteria that we would utilize in the event that we had to get to that point Uh, we're hopeful that uh, as we're asking here and i I spoke to the newspaper yesterday and hopefully the folks will uh, share with their neighbors who may be not hearing this that we are (laughs) in a difficult situation and that all outdoor water use would be of great value to the community because that would make sure we have more water for the things we need to do, like you know, sanitary conditions and, and fire protection and keeping our tanks filled. Um, so we're asking. The we're far- asking at this point. The Farmer's Almanac is predicting a snowy winter. God, I hope it shows up soon. <laughs> <laughs> I, I presume, as you said, this problem really started with the dry winter we had yeah it's been a cycle you know it's, it's over time it's not it's never instantaneous it's a it's a cycle it's a, something that could go away for another five years another 10 years it's interesting how droughts tend to be in a 20-year cycle yes uh, and it's been about 20 know. years since we had the last severe one isn't it amazing 21 years actually yeah, that's so. 20 years before that yeah, yeah exactly so. yeah do you have all the funding in place uh, you talked about financing before in regards to moving water from the north end of the county to the south end of the county uh, is there enough of this set up so that uh, a year from now we're having a different conversation well, the plants will not be completed for another two or three years, probably mm-hmm. closer to three. So if it's dry, we'll have this conversation next year. The financing, we have everything lined up, and we've done a wonderful job. And thank you for all the help of the community and helping us get the funding. We got a lot of grant money even. We got $50 million in grants that are going to be used to allow us to build the infrastructure to sustain our system and to allow it to expand. It just takes that time to mm-hmm. get it in place and get it moving forward. So our rate increase went through. We were thankful for the support. Um, it's, and it's, it's a marginal rate increase, but it's going to be helpful to pay for the debt that we're going to incur to build all this infrastructure. So everything's in place. It's just a matter of getting through the bureaucracy so we can get out to bid, so we can get these projects started, and we can eventually, a couple of years from now, be sitting here and say, you know what, now we have surplus capacity, we're in good shape, and we can look our customers and say, we have a dependable, uh, sustainable water supply. So you can't predict then? It's just when it happens, it's going to happen? Or do you have a timeline, time frame, Jim? Oh, oh for the plants? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, there, we are ready to go out to bid. We're just waiting for the financing to come through. And okay. out, out of nowhere, <laughs> after we got so far along, the DEP okay. shows up and says, oh, now you got to do another study for something we already have in place. We already have the plants there. It's just a bureaucracy. It's delayed us another three or four months right off the bat. And that's the frustrating part. We're mm-hmm. ready. We've done our job. Our engineers have done their job. Chairman Rowe has been a great proponent of getting these things accomplished. Financing's in place. Bureaucracy is in the way. Hurry up and wait. Well said. But the, that's downstream. Yes, uh, at the present time, you have a real problem, and you're encouraging all the users of the Public Service Water District to reduce the amount of water, especially outdoor water. Yes, sir. We've already told there's no bulk water sales. We've re- re- pulled in all our hydrant meters, so all this dust control that's going on, we said no, because we're also doing everything we can to minimize 
unnecessary water use. We want to make sure we have enough for the reasons that people depend upon, which is the drinking water, cooking, flushing, washing to clothes and all that. Now, going back to the to the to those folks outside of public service water, uh, those folks on, on private wells, if, they, if their well runs dry, how can you provide them some relief? Well, it would only be an option if we have water managed in front of their property yeah. already. But if you do not, someone in Back Creek Valley, for example, uh, say la vie, we, we wouldn't be the option for them. Yeah. They would have to uh, contact a well driller. That, yeah. But the well drillers are all busy right now replacing. Uh, and just supposed. digging a deeper well, uh, back in Back Creek Valley may be the case because it's, it's a different type of rock. But in the, in the limestone, karsh limestone, mm -hmm. digging a deeper well is not necessarily the solution. There's no certainty when you uh, where you find the water unless you do a geophysical survey. <laughs> you got a little business going? There? No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I was I, just going to say. I'm, I'm an example. I I have two wells total around 2,000 feet, and uh, and I and I get maybe less than half a gallon uh, a minute. At your estate? At my at my right house. next to the river. Even. Right next to the river. The, wow. the limestone is so tight. Uh, the the limestone, the water runs in conduits, corridors you have. You can miss that conduit by two feet, mm. and you don't have any water. Yes. So that's why a geophysical survey can pinpoint exactly where that yeah. conduit is. And that's an interesting. You bring that up, Admiral. We're actually, we've peppered the entire south end of the county looking for more water yeah. supply. We yeah. drilled about a half a yeah. dozen test wells now. We've got some things that are encouraging, but once again, it's time. It's not going to help us today. Yeah. We, we have future opportunities. It's just going to take a little while for them to be developed and then bring to the new plant we're building down in Bunker Hill. Yeah. Jim Ouellette, thank you for coming in today. Any final thoughts? Well, I just thank you all for giving me the opportunity to hopefully share a very objective and, and request with our community that this is a situation we find ourselves in through no fault of our own. Uh, we do have some things that we need to talk about, as Maria brought up, and so as what the future holds for how we add customers. But please help us get through this period of time so we can... Uh, Wait for some precipitation to arrive and then buy time to get these infrastructure projects going along. But thanks to Jim, thanks to Chris, mm -hmm. uh, thanks to uh, uh, Greg Rowe, all those, they historically have taken a forward looking perspective as opposed to looking backwards. That's why we're, we're as well positioned we are. We're not in a perfect position, but we're a lot better than we would have if you're not taking a forward looking view. So, thank you. Well done. Jim, thank you for coming in. Thank you. Thank you all.